And we are joined now by our 12 News law enforcement analyst and former head of the Rhode Island State Police, Stephen O'Donnell. Thanks for being here today. You're welcome. Uh, you know, police announced today that that suspect was able to evade police, at least initially, um, by blending into the crowd of people running away. There are reports that he was dressed as a woman. Is that part of the police training to be watching who's in that crowd running from a scene? It is. Uh, this is a little bit more unique than the, I would say typical. It's kind of mm. sad we're talking about typical reactions to an active shooter. But typically, the active shooters kill themselves or force the police to kill them. They refer to as suicide by cop. Here, it's pretty clear his intent, obviously, was to kill a lot of people, but to escape, which is unusual mm -hmm. in typical tragedy that we're talking about today. And something that we heard in that uh, story with Bradley is just that uh, this guy legally purchased his gun, though uh, this was banned in Illinois, the high capacity magazines and firearms of this nature. So what kind of consequences could he now be facing? Well, I think the gun charges are they're part of uh, overall murder. Murder is the charges. The gun charge is insignificant, candidly, if he violated a law. He bought it legally in another state, and that's an issue, uh, but apparently he has no record. So the gun charges are really adding five or ten years to uh, seven murders and um, all the other people that are injured. So assault with a dangerous weapon, um, attempted murder, seven counts of homicide at this point, and the gun charges. That could bring the federal government into it, which is a different sensing process more than it is with an act, a regular active shooter in the state criminally charging him in Illinois. And this is just something we keep seeing, unfortunately, across the country. I mean, just what's your reaction? This guy is young. I mean, like you said, the intent is a little bit different with him. But we're here we are talking about another mass shooting in our country. It is. It's a combination of you get, they get the guns illegally. And be, if you just look at them, it, it, it appears something is wrong. Tattoos are tattoos, but use facial tattoos tell a different story. Mm -hmm. Not too many people have facial tattoos, but by all accounts that he was on the radar, he's posting things. There has to be some type of algorithm that Facebook and all these social media outlets can use when you word, use the words mass shootings or you're posting things. That goes to law enforcement and law enforcement can investigate. There, should ha there has to be um, that part of the solution in my opinion. Obviously, every shooting is different. This is not the first time you've been in with us talking about this. Uh, is there one piece of information we should know as the public uh, if we find ourselves in this situation that helps police? Obviously, all those people in the crowd were running. Is there something that would have helped them uh, in that immediate moment of, of, of chaos? Well, this brings back to the shooting in Vegas, the Harvest 91, elevated snipers. And you know, I wouldn't say he was a sniper, but he's shooting from elevation is very, very difficult um, to defend that. And someone on the street shooting as bad as it is, you can react to it a little bit differently. But if you don't know where it's coming from, it takes a long time. My guess is if he chose to keep shooting, then law enforcement could have acted, but he could have killed and named a lot more people, decided to stop shooting. Hopefully the police will find out why and his escape. So his motive is a little bit different than most of those active shooters because his plan was to get away, obviously and blending in as a woman. He climbed up the fire escapes by all intents, so if someone saw him, you'll probably find that out later. Oh, I saw a woman climbing up the fire escape. That's an odd behavior. Pick up the phone and call the police. And just really quickly before we let you go, there was another shooting in Philadelphia. Two officers there were injured in that. I mean, just what's your reaction again, like just having to deal with that? What's kind of the protocol when two officers are shot? There's not many details in that shooting. What are they going through right now to kind of piece that together? Well, the investigative piece is to solve who did it, but I, th I guess at, at the core of it is what's happening in our society where we're shooting each other at these crazy rates. And in Chicago, there were 57 people shot over the weekend. That's ludicrous. But those things don't catch on as much of an active shooter like it did in Highland Park. Uh, I still think the police, they have to allow the police to come back doing those anti-gun task forces, making criminals, not anybody else, scared that the police are going to come and arrest you. Um, the police across the country, I wouldn't say have deep police, but because of all the things that happened, have dealt those specialized units have been withdrawn. When I was a young police officer, that's what I did. I worked in task forces where you target people moving guns and drugs. They're synonymous. And so if you take some of them off and people think they're going to get stopped and a gun's going to take away from them and they're going to go to jail, it's unfortunate, but that's the reality we're dealing with. All right. A lot of valuable information. Thanks for joining us here at Forest. No, thank you. Thank you.